There's two things going on in Afghanistan right now. One has to do with President Obama's visit a few days ago. Part of it was to say hello to the troops and thank them for their service. That's part of any president's visit. But the broader part was President Obama needed to meet with President Karzai, the U.S.-backed president of Afghanistan. And I think one of the things he needed to tell him was not only about corruption. Yes, he certainly had to talk with him about corruption, not least because of his brother, who's been paid by the CIA and is known to be involved in drug dealing and a host of other things. But besides corruption and besides his brother, I think what President Obama wanted to say to President Karzai was a reminder that whoever else in the region he might be talking to, President Karzai had just had a quick visit with the Iranian president, Ahmadinejad. We know that the Pakistani government is making clear to Karzai that if he's going to be talking to the Taliban, they better be in the room at the same time. China is making inroads in Afghanistan, particularly with investments in mining. Everybody in the region, everybody in, among the neighbors are all much more involved. But I think that President Obama wanted to be sure that President Karzai remembers that only the U.S., of all those neighboring forces, only the U.S. can keep President Karzai and his brother and his corrupt government in power. And he better start doing what we say. I think that was part of President Obama's six-hour agenda. The other thing going on in Afghanistan is that violence, again, we're hearing, is up and up. There's a new offensive on, underway in Kandahar. And before that even takes off fully, we're hearing new reports about the killing of unarmed, innocent Afghan civilians by U.S. troops right at the checkpoints in Afghan cities. We had a quote from General McChrystal himself, we have shot an amazing number of people, but to my knowledge, none has ever proven to be a threat. That's a horrible reality. More violence is not going to do anybody any good. There is no military solution in Afghanistan. And as long as we know that, apologizing for killing more Afghan civilians isn't going to win any hearts and minds. There's no military solution. We have to stop acting as if there was. That means that we have to stop the military force, pull out the troops, then we can begin to make good on the huge obligation, the huge debt that we owe to the people of Afghanistan. For Grit TV, I'm Phyllis Bennis.